Hi again, let's talk about modular programming. Now we're using Python and we're going to break our code up into small components. I don't want to do everything at one time and I like to look at it as I'm outsourcing. If I'm the main and the work is taking place within the main, I want to push as much of the work out to other functions or methods so that if I don't need them, they're not tying up space within my main. So I only invoke them or call them as needed. So within my main, I'm calling the get year method. I'm actually calling the put date method and passing it a value. And we'll talk about the passing values and returning values shortly. But in all, within my code, I have four methods that I've defined or declared. Two of them receive value. Two of them do not. Two of them return value. Two of them do not. As well as, at the very top of the code, you'll see from date time, import date time. So I've got a class of code, and within it, I'm importing date time and this date time object, I create an instance of it, and now I'll take anything that's created by the now function within date time, I'm going to store it in a variable that I've called now. And because of where I've declared it, that dictates where I have access to it. Now if you look back to the global and local lecture that we had, you realize that this is something that everybody has access to it to use, but they're not modifying it. So we see here in put date, there's a variable within that now object that we're referencing. It's a month variable. There's a day variable. So these attributes or variables associated with that object, we're referencing them. And we've got another previous video where we talk about a character swap and if you don't remember what's taking place here go back and watch a previous video that we had that involved character swapping so when it comes to this date time let's talk about date time for a second so date time goes and it acquires the current date and time Let's look and see what format that's in. Got a little comment here, and I'll take the pound symbol off and turn off that comment. So print, the value in now is comma now. So I pass it two arguments or two parameters. One's a string, and the other is this now object that I've got up top. So if I run my code, let's just look and see what's in now. And I'm using the latest version, 3.6. So I have to deal with things a certain way when it comes to print functions. So the value in now is, so you see the year, the month, the day, and the time. It's down to a millisecond. So it went and looked at the system clock and it obtained that data and it passed it back to me. So we've got it in that format. Now we know a format it is in and we can use it. And I've got a program here that asks me, what year were you born? Uh, I'll tell it 1980. Enter, it says you are 37 years old, current date, current time. So if I keep this running over here. Let's look at what's taking place within my code. Okay. So I define the main and here's this line of code we had where we printed out what's in now. And the next thing that happens within the code, I have acquired age. It's a variable that I've declared and I'm putting in it whatever get year returns to me. 
So I invoked or called this get year method. Now it's returning some value. I'm converting it into an integer by using that int function. And then I'm storing it in this variable. Let's go look at the get year method. When I defined get year, I also declared a variable year. It receives some value. What year were you born? And it stores it in year. And then it returns that value within year to where that method is called. So I called it here, that little spot in my code, to where I called it, and that's where the value gets returned to. So if I typed in 1980, it deposits the string of characters 1980 right in between these two parentheses. That passes, think of parentheses as where we pass value, that passes that value 19802, the int method. The int method converts that string of characters into an integer. So then we took that integer and we stored it in acquired age. So I have some value sitting in acquired age. It exists within my main. And now I call put date. Now put date, let's go look at put date. I defined it, there's the name, and it receives some value. What does it receive? Well, within the method, we call it how old. How old comes in, and right here you can see we're using how old. Now, how old, where do we get how old? What's getting passed? What's getting passed to get age is right here. Whatever's being returned by calc age. So let's go look at calc age. And we did pass acquired age to that calc age method. So when we defined calc age, we said it's going to receive birth year. And we're going to subtract birth year from what year it is now and we're going to save that in age. So calc age receives some value, uses it, does not change it, just uses it, and then deposits it in age and then sends age out. Now I could have modified birth year. Birth year only exists within this method. And what I passed to birth year is the value in acquired age. So I pass the value in acquired age through the parentheses to calc age. Calc age used it. It gave it a new name. It, it took that value and it put it in birth year. Used the value, manipulated it mathematically, and then passed some other value. Whatever's in age, it passed that value back to where calc age was called. So here's where calc age was called. So what gets returned back? The value in age. So now we have how old you are being passed to this location that you see highlighted. That location happens to exist in between the parentheses where I pass parameters to put date. We go back up to put date. What's there? Age. I'm passing age. Put date calls it how old, and then uses it. it. Says you are. That's whatever was in age. It's coming in here now. Years old. It also gives us the current date, and this is something that we talked about before in a previous lecture, and also talked about this date time as well. But uh, using that swap to swap the the characters out, swap the values. You may need to go back if you're not remembering that you want to go back and check previous videos for that explanation so I'm passing values to methods and returning values from methods so if I compared this put date to a friend of mine that comes over and cuts my grass on the weekend that friend 
requires something from me. I have to pass it to them. That's money. They do something with that money, and then they perform a task for me. They don't really give me anything back in return. I also have times when I may need to go to the store. I go to the store, I pass them some value, and they return me something. If I go to buy gas, I have a get gas function. It requires money, and it returns me fuel. So I pass it one thing, and I need to know, bear in mind, we always need to know what's required from us and in what form it must exist, the name, and what's being returned to us, if anything, and in what form. Data types is huge. We've talked about that previously. Okay. So we're getting used to, we talked previously about the concepts of global and local. We're getting used to avoiding globals. Some organizations do not want you to use globals. So with this, we're passing value back and forth, and we don't have to worry about the issue when it comes to globals. So our code all works. We've outsourced it into these three methods, aside from the main. If all the work is here, and this first line of code was really just for us to see what's taking place, I have two lines of code. My main has two tasks. I invoked methods that exist above, but this is all we're, all the work I'm doing. I have work being performed by other methods. So that's why we, we call this modular programming in that each one of these little methods may or may not run. I may or may not call them. I may or may not need them. And it keeps it clean. Once I have a method or a function that works and I know what it's required and what it does for me, I can reuse this little block of code over and over and over again. And that's what I want you to get in the habit of doing. Create something that works, get a full understanding of how it works, what it requires, what it does for you, and then we can reuse it. So this date time object, we'll reuse that over and over and over again. We get used to using it. Okay. So I'll see you in the next video.